So let's add a stage, which is just a background. Call it new stage. I'm gonna add a stage for from a file just so I have something for reference. Uh, tavern. Shouldn't I make DP hit for air and crouch? Yes, but I don't actually have those animated, so. Oh, wait, no, 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 I, I get it, I get it. Yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, we can do that. Sure, there's no problem with that. All right, anyway. So. The stage script uh, script tab, there we go, is extremely simple. You have one default player layer. That is literally where the players are. Anything you put beforehand, the players is going to appear behind the players. Anything that you put after will appear above the players. That's how I did the rain stage. I exploited the layers. But for this case, we're just going to do something nice and simple. We're going to call this one BG for background. This is not, wait, is it? Yep, I didn't think so. This is just going to be the sky background, which as you saw in my other stage that I made, it is, it is just a blue screen. So let's pick let's pick a mountain top stretch this pick that oop oh why are you not cooperating there we go oop no I should have done personal palette Okay, we got it in there. So now we need to add a floor. So let's call this one floor. Like I said in the pre-show, I like to use a uh, 100 just for simplicity's sake. Oops, that's gonna add another image. Floor. You large icons. Yeah, I know that's the reason. Um, I, I think it's an old stage file. No, I know that is an old stage file now that I think about it. Let's put this one since it has a bunch of dead bodies. Oh, I didn't do personal palette again. Ah, oh, that did not go as I wanted. That looks terrible. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't use a personal palette. Oh, because I didn't click personal palette, I clicked the other one like a moron. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to look. Go me. So, what do we learn, guys? Pick the right option. This is private palette. All right, so now we got a stage. Background doesn't move. And the stage does. Um, yeah, let's fix this background because I know for a fact that it's going to botch up somewhere. Let's pick something else. Uh, you 
Yeah, this one will work. Do that. Please. There we go. Yeah, I know this one works. So we have a cave inside a tavern. Seems legit. All right, now, as I said, bold is your neutral. These are not bold, these are not neutral, they will not loop themselves, so you have to loop them yourself. So make sure you add a loop, and then you're good to go. So I know this stage will work. All right, let's see what we got. Right, I need to make a stupid demo. Oh, one. Good. Character one, character one, player, player. No, not that. Start animation. And look, they can move. We did it, guys. No crashes. Our stage works, but we want, we want music. So first, let's add, not an image. Get out. Let's add sound. I like to add a image before the sound only be to establish it. And then this is looping at the image, so it's not going to replay the sound. So let's find a wave file, which I know I have. Sound, general sound. Wait, no, that might not be it. Music. Oh, let's pick this. Son of a bitch. All right, I guess I won't pick that. All right, let's pick a PVP. I a DFO song. Go. Yep. And now we have music. That is literally all you need for a stage. Oh, wait, no, I lied. You got to do one more thing. Uh, remember that uh, on the basics tab, this thing doesn't work. If you put BGM, then you put this. Yeah, you can play it here, but it's not going to work. So the workaround that I've seen for everything is to have a sound there that literally does nothing. I don't remember what I called it. I think it was none. I can find it. What I call it? Uh, basic. Oh, it's a MIDI. I made it a MIDI. Okay. There it is. None. And none. That is how you make a stage. That is literally it. You have a background and you have a floor. And uh, let's lower this floor a little bit to, so the, you can see the background a little bit. We got music, we got a floor, and we got a foreground and we have a background. And nothing is wrong. And apparently I can't use my number pad and my keyboard at the same time. That's a first. And if we want, if we want to add a little more depth, we can add like a little bit of a width to this. No, not. Yeah, width. So, I don't know. Let's, ma let's make it 40. See how it's kind of scrolling differently? If I add it to, if I make it, uh, if I disable it, then it's never going to move. But if I add this, it adds a little bit of a scroll. It adds a little bit of depth to the stage, make it giving a little more perspective. Yes, you are right, Kisuke. That is absolutely true. Why don't we... Do that. I didn't touch variables yet, did I? Did I? And we are running an hour and thirty minutes into this tutorial. So, oh, okay. I use a task variable. Okay. So we'll do it the same way. I think that's sufficient. 
There are three types of variables in this game, I mean, in this engine. Think of variables as your most powerful tool, as they are. And I cannot reiterate that enough. A lot of times when people ask, how do I do this? The most obvious choice is usually use a variable. If you use a variable, it's something as simple as, I only want this guy to attack once in the air. Well, you can do a loop of the falling animation in the active skill, but then they can't air block. So you want them to return to falling. If you return to falling, then they can air block, but then they can do the attack again. So in order to do that, you set an air attack and in front of it a variable. The second that air attack happens, the variable goes to plus one. And then the next variable says, if this variable is at a plus one, skip to the end. And then it stops. So some variables are absolutely precious. Save them until you absolutely have to use them. I have used them numerous times. And you are limited to what you have. Obviously, the uh, stage select only, or stages only use task and system. If you go to characters and you add a variable here, you will see that variables, you have a task, you have a character variable and a system. I will explain that in just a moment. First, let's add a proper loop. We skip throws? Yeah, I did skip throws. Oops. Uh, I'll get back to them, because like I said, I handle throws differently. I handle throws like an attack. So, task variable, how'd I do this? Use this, replace. Oh, okay. Oops. Number of rounds. What was it, above? Yep. Okay. So, what this variable is reading, task variable, oh, getting ahead of myself, I'm sorry. A task variable only works in the line of code it is currently in. So if I were to put this variable in the floor skill, it cannot work with anything in the BG skill. So this variable will only read in this line. In this case, this is all we need. So right now it's reading task variable A. It's using the number of rounds. The replace is just saying, it's just allowing me to tick off use this. I am pointing at my screen as if you can see my screen, what I'm pointing at. <laughs> The replace is just allowing me to select use this, data number of rounds. Your number of rounds is one, and I said it's above, which the second a match starts, it's already above. So when this happens, it will read the BG skill, reads the variable. Initially, it starts out at zero, or one. Once round one ends, it will be above one. So when it repeats, it will read this variable, and then it'll skip the image, It'll skip this sound, and then it'll just loop the image. So when this, it goes to round two, which I will demonstrate now. No, hold on. Let's do it this way. No condition band, no calculator. So, oops. I forgot what button this is to kill, but whatever, it's fine. The music didn't loop. The round changed, and then the music restarted. So if we activate our variable, it's going, like I said, it's going to read, it is round one, it is not above yet. So it's going to read this image, it's going to read the sound, it's going to play the sound, it's going to read this image, it's going to fall into this loop, and then the loop is going to go back to this image, into the loop, into the image, etc., etc. Thank you for telling me it was F5. So now that I have established this variable again, I'm going to hit save, test play. That's not F5, that's F4. I'm a genius. Anyway. 
Anyway, so F5. Round two. The music is still looping, just like a traditional fighting game. Yeah, but that's cheating. Absolutely is cheating. A lot of times when I have my friends playtest my game, I just quickly press F5. Well, that was back in the day. So there you go. There is a complete stage. That is all. There is not a lot to it. It is not as complicated as people think. However, if you didn't know about this basics tab, for some reason I can't click on things now. Interesting. Yeah, I cannot click anything. I can click the skill window, but I can't click to the FM. I'm not too sure what's going on. Well, it's a good thing I saved a lot. That is not the right program. All right, back in business. So we have a stage. We have a character. Um... What is the blue box underneath the foreground? Oh, that was something I added on just in case I needed it. It's nothing special. Uh, it was to make sure that, it was also to make sure that 2D FM doesn't select one of the main colors in the background. Uh, whatchamacallit? It doesn't take that as a transparency color. You don't really need to do that if you select the proper palette. Why 2D FM? Just why? Oh my god. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, that that the blue bar is just to it's just so the transparency doesn't be the uh main brown colors don't get picked as transparency. But yeah, this MIDI that's none, all it is is a MIDI I created that had literally zero sound. I have a program called Guitar Pro, uh, Guitar Pro 5 right here. I can create MIDIs in there, and that's exactly what I did. I just outputted a literal one-second MIDI to just fill in that. The uh, sound, uh, I just used a wave converter, or a sound converter. All right. 